November 1st on the Toad Cam coming from New York Toad City having received several very nasty messages on my uh, comment section from some very immature paranoid schizophrenics who object to having someone talk about shamanism and salvia divinorum um, hey that's par for the par for the course there are plenty of paranoid schizophrenics out there and the problem with paranoid schizophrenics is when they don't recognize that they're paranoid schizophrenics or they're having serious other forms of mood disorder or thought disorder and need medication and need to see psychiatrists immediately before they become involuntarily institutionalized. This means you. Um, <laughs> ah, the lack of humor. Um, so where are we at? What have we learned from Salvia? What have we learned from NLP? What have we learned from all these different things? What, what is a lot of it about? A lot of it is about exploring consciousness and understanding how consciousness uh, composes reality and how it decomposes reality because it's doing both things. It's got, to, it's got to take in a lot of data about what we call reality, which we don't really know all that much about, but we know, we know the, the mo most useful things about reality. That's pretty much what, what consciousness is. If you think what consciousness is doing is, is it's primarily a filter. And there's a massive information out there that simply doesn't have a lot of survival value. And the perp one of the main purposes of consciousness is to filter down or narrow down, funnel down all that data coming in into the, the fewest, most relevant categories and processes that help us live, procreate, generate ideas, succeed in life. So obviously consciousness itself is, and how we go about doing consciousness is a, is a very important, very central, uh, very central piece of exercise for us. And um, consciousness, you might say, in another sense, is founded on memory. So we don't really sit around and think about how our memory works, but neuroscience generally breaks memory down in its simple sense into four major pieces. One would be um, your uh, short-term memory, basically your sort of the, 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 what you think of as the now. I'm hanging out in the now. This is the now. This is the moment I live in. This is my little sort of short-term zone of nowness. And then after it's sort of been in the now, we've got to figure out what we, what we do with it. Do we just discard it? This stuff is not all that relevant or we've seen it a lot. You know, it's just one of a number of categories. Or do we put it into semantic memory that is sort of our, our uh, semantic web of definitions, words, meanings? Uh, do we put it into our procedural memory? You know, this is how you go about doing stuff, like riding a bike. Uh, do we put it into our episodic memory? You know, like, okay, these are specific episodes that contain valuable information or memorable information. And things that get packed into episodic memory or not often depend on the amount of norepinephrine that happens to be floating around in your brain at the time. So when you have a temporary stress response or a fear response, you tend to produce a set of neurotransmitters which cause those uh, events or those things going on around you go into long-term memory and after a period of time they consolidate and they just sort of become part of your permanent memory banks and that the consolidation period can take quite a long time so where a lot of a lot of cognitive neuroscience where a lot of uh, pharmacological neuroscience is headed is trying to create medicines drugs uh, which allow us to store things in memory more reliably. And many of these are amphetamines or amphetamine-like substances. Some are other types of substances that are being very actively researched. I think Gary Lynch at uh, University of California at Irvine is working on a novel set of, of memory enhancers called ampokines, which um, not too surprisingly activate the AMPA receptor that works in conjunction with the NMDA receptor. But um, the, the name of the game, if you really look at what is the name of the game of where, where medicine or pharmacology is going around memory is, is how to either make us as younger people better at putting things into memory or on the other end of the, the uh, scale where you have 
elders who have Alzheimer's and other forms of memory disorders how to retain things. So you see drugs like that are more in the um, acetylcholine and cholinesterase inhibiting family, like Aricept. So it seems like the younger brains, the, the, the strategy is to goose or strengthen the activity in the younger brain using things that are more in the norepinephrine family, maybe dopamine family. And in older brains, they're trying to goose it more in the zone of the uh, acetylcholine family neurotransmitters. But nonetheless, what the, the strategy, the important strategy that our society is investing enormous sums of money and probably taking pretty enormous risks with people's brains is in increasing the efficiency and increasing the reliability of how we take stuff out there, get it into our memory and keep it, keep it firmly in memory. So when you ask what is NLP up to, uh, NLP also, a lot of what I consider the good, legitimate, um, grounded form of NLP uh, is, is also working with memory processes and how, how we categorize and how we store and how we retrieve and how we describe things. And uh, whether, you know, in what ways we put them into episodic memory or in what ways we put them into semantic memory or in what ways we put them in procedural memory. And different branches of NLP tend to focus on these uh, different memory strategies in different ways. So um, I'll let you hang out with that. that. That's kind of a lot of data. Um, you know, and you kids that have been sending me the hate mail, remember there are also medicines that are called atypical antipsychotics like uh, Seroquel, Zyprexa, things like that. Um, you might be a good candidate for those. And those also deal with disordered dopamine function, um, which produces schizophrenia. <laughs> okay, later.